Jeez, Molly, it looks like they didn't like your paw from last week. The idea for this week's video has come from one of my subscribers, Jay. He sent me a message and asked if I could make a Lego paperweight. He asked if I could have it in the shape of a cylinder, similar to my snap-on bike. He wants me to cast two Lego boys inside to represent his own kids, and he wants to give it to his mother-in-law. So I was lucky enough that we have a Lego shop at our dream world here in Queensland, and you're able to build yourself your own figurine. So with the details he gave me, I was able to get these figurines that look like his boys. You guys might have seen that picture on Instagram where I went and picked up all this burl. So we just got to find one that we think the boys will be able to sit on it and we'll still have enough clearance to turn. I think I'll go with this piece and I'll sit the Lego boys across the front. Now we need to cut this burl down to size, but before I do that, I need to decide what mold I'm going to use. I've decided to go ahead with this plastic mold here. Now a lot of you said in my last video that I should have used a cylinder mold, but if I was to use a cylinder mold, I'd have to shape the burl to match this curve then I'd have to glue it to the side because I'd have to cast it standing up. And the other problem with using a cylinder mould is if I did, this video would end in about 30 seconds. I just need to knock a couple of these corners off just so it sits nice and flat. I'm just going to go do that on the disc sander. So now I need to work out the positioning of these boys because I'm going to drill some holes so that their feet kind of lock into the wood. I think I'm just going to go something like that where they're kind of looking at each other. So I'm going to mark their feet now and we'll drill some holes. Now I'm just going to do a test fit to make sure it's all good. I'm pretty happy with that. So now we'll clean this up and we'll paint it. Because we're going to paint this a purple color and I want it to be nice and bright, I'm just going to put a base coat down of some white. That way it'll make the purple pop a bit more. You know, someone once commented that I ain't no artist because they reckon I paint like a house painter. I don't see the resemblance. Now I'm just going to leave this to dry and then we'll put some purple over the top. That's a real nice looking purple. It's really bright and vibrant. What do you guys think of that colour? I think it looks amazing. It's going to look awesome once I put the two boys in there. Now that it's all dry, I just want to run over with some lavender shimmer powder just to give it a nice look. You don't notice too much of a difference when you put the shimmer dust on, but it does give more of a 3D effect to all these peaks. Now we need to glue these boys in place. Now I'm going to do that by taking some UV resin Put a few drops around the bottom and that'll hold him in place. Curing the UV resin is quite easy, I can go pop this out in the sun for a couple of minutes or I can just grab my UV torch and run it over the top. Now it's time to get the resin ready and I'll be using Artcast by Just Resin. If you guys want to try this for yourself or any of their pigments, you can grab 10% off by using code word BENZWORKS10. This is the slow set version of the Artcast and this one's mixed at a ratio of 3 to 1. It's really important when mixing your resin to scrape the sides down and the bottom. 
You want to make sure you mix everything through really well, that way you won't get any soft spots in your resin. Now I'm just going to pour the resin over the top. Now I'm going to do this nice and slowly. If you guys don't have a pressure pot, you want to mix slowly and pour slowly, that way you'll reduce the amount of bubbles. Now I'm just going to pop this in the pressure pot and we'll check on it in about four hours. It's been four hours. Let's take this out of the mold and see what we got. Well, it looks like we've got a really nice clear casting there. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. The one thing I'm not too happy about is the fact that I used this purple acrylic. You can see in the bottle there, it looks quite purple. But you can see here, it's gone like pinky looking. It still has that hint of purple, but it's definitely more pink than purple. One thing I've noticed while looking at this blank, you can see here when you get to the corners, it really distorts the Lego. Now I'm a bit worried that if I turn it into a cylinder like the Snap-on bike, it's just going to distort these boys so much that it may look a bit funny. So I've got an idea to just square off all these edges and make like a rectangle shape. I think it'll still look really nice, but I'm going to run it past Jay first and see what he thinks. So I've just heard back from Jay and he's happy for me to do that. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with his top edge. That way we can still see through the side here to make sure we're not getting too close. Then I'll straighten all the other edges and hopefully we'll have a nice rectangle shape. It's really important that I get nice straight and square edges. You can see here that my table is slightly lower than my disc right now. And that's because when I make my dragon eggs, I like to flatten the bottom and I like that angle. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my square now. Just make sure my table is nice and straight. Now this process is going to take me a while and it's going to be quite noisy. So I'm probably going to overlay some music right now. So let's cue the music and get on to sanding. That's the main shaping all finished. You can see there we've got some nice sharp edges. Now a couple of things you guys probably noticed during that clip was I drew some guidelines on the base here and that was to help me when I was pushing against the disc just to make sure I was parallel. And another thing I was doing throughout the process was always checking my squareness and I was always keeping the disc clean by using this rubber cleaner. The next step is sanding and for that we're going to need a couple of things. The first thing is a nice flat surface. Now I'm going to use the cast iron top of my table saw and the next thing is patience. We need to take our time, be real steady, and make sure we don't round this over because we want to keep our nice sharp edges. The grits I'm going to run through are 360, 400, 600, 800, and 1200. That should be enough to give me a nice finish and then we'll be able to take it to the wheel. Even though it's winter in Australia, it's bloody hot. I'm gonna have to go put the workshop fan on. So I finished sanding. You can see here that I kept these nice clean lines. Now before I go and polish, I need to make a stand for it. I'm gonna make the stand out of this off cut piece of burl. Now Jay asked that I have the boys at about a 45 degree angle. That way their faces are looking up at you. Now 
now I'm just going to take these to the disc sander and I'll give them a bit of a shape up. Yes, I know, it's a metal file, but I just want to take little bits off at a time. I just want to creep up on this. So to keep in with the nice sharp edges of the blank, I've gone ahead and made the stand the same way with these nice sharp edges. Now I've gone small with the stand because I didn't want to take away from the main focus, which are the boys. I'm just going to finish the stand up by giving it a couple of coats of linseed oil. How good does it make the grain pop out? It looks so nice. Now I'll put this on quite thick and I'll leave it to soak in for a couple of hours. Then I'll just come back and wipe the excess off and then I'll do it again. That way we know it's soaked in really well. While the stand's drying, I'm now going to take the resin and polish it up on the wheel. Before I show you how the casting turned out, I'm just not sure if I'm happy with these burl legs. They look quite nice, but I kind of envisioned a Lego stand. So I've got a bag of Lego, and let's try and make a stand. I think for the stand I might go with a single row instead of the double. So I've put some bricks together and I've made the blank big enough that I can overlay the wooden stand and just mark this bottom edge and then I'll take it to the sander and take the angle off. So I just took it to the sander and I just flattened the bottom here. So I'm going to make another one now, glue it together so it won't come apart, then we'll have some Lego stands. I've got the legs all finished, now I'm going to leave these to dry, but in the meantime, let's go check the casting. Well guys, what did you think of that one? This thing turned out bloody unreal. I love the way it's got the straight sharp edges. It looks awesome. And what did you think of the two different stands? Do you prefer the Lego one or the Burl one? Let me know in the comments. Even though it took me about two hours to sand and polish this one, I think the end result was really nice. I think the block look really sets it off. If you'd like to purchase any of my creations, I have them all for sale on my Etsy store. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want to check out any sneak peeks of upcoming projects, you can check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. Before I end this video, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate your support. Well, that's all for this week's video. I'm going to package this up, put it in the mail, and send it off to Jay. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.